Steve, Steve Bruder's dad, uh, Joe. Joe is taking off of his uh, respirator uh, this week. He passed all of his breathing tests. He's breathing on his own, uh, so he is improving. And so we praise God for that. Um, that was a, a big question mark when, when it came time to take that off and see what's going on. But continuing to pray for Joe, a long way to go yet, uh, but looking good at this point. Um, Marvine was in and out of the hospital. This, she had some blood pressure things, just a little uptight about something. Who knows? Um, but, but she's home. She's well. Uh, she says she's doing well. And so uh, we pray that that continues to go that way for her as well. Uh, Stan Godfrey was in a few days last week, um, taking care of, of some breathing issues, uh, some blood clots, those kinds of things. He's wearing a hot heart monitor uh, for another week yet, I believe, is, is the goal with that. Uh, so keep standing your prayers as well, if you would. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, Mike Zimmerman had an MRI done this, this week, trying to figure out what's going on in his body. We're waiting word on that. Uh, so continue to pray for uh, discernment with the doctors and wisdom as they look at stuff for Mike. Evelyn uh, Neetrow has got some surgery coming up um, this Tuesday. Um, it's one of those things that it just makes you go, eh. So, um, but that's coming up Tuesday. Uh, so keep Evelyn in your prayers if you would. Um, and that's what I've got on that. I promised you last week I would give you updates on me as I had updates. Uh, here's the updates. Uh, most of what I told you last week was wrong. Um, and so we'll, we're, we'll start again. Um, the, the change, yes, there, there still is an, an aortic aneurysm. It's not down here in my belly, though. It's not an abdominal. It's up here at the top of my heart. It's in that little thing that goes and hooks at the top. Um, it's still there. The size was right. It's still it's still four nine. Um, saw the saw the cardiologist um, this week up at Goshen. Doc's not worried. Okay, so he's not worried. None of us are worried. Okay. Um, setting up a couple of, of cardiac tests for me here in this this month. Make sure everything else with, with the heart is fine, because uh, that has to be good in order for them to address anything when that time comes. That time to come is a way yet. Um, it has to grow to 5.2 before insurance and the doctor at Oak Heart will even think about intervening surgically. Uh, so in the meantime, it can stay like it is forever and ever. It can grow, it can shrink. Um, there's, there's Apparently, just not a whole lot of rhyme and reason to them. Um, I have to watch my blood pressure on a daily basis, uh, so that I'll do. Uh, I'm not allowed to play contact sports anymore, uh, so no more contact sports. Um, the only restriction that I have is, is excessive stress. So, like, if I want to go and lift 100, 150 pounds or something, I'm not supposed to do that. Um, but. I mean, literally, that's it. There's, there's no worries. There's no restrictions. It's a matter of we'll keep an eye on this thing and see what happens. Um, I thank you for your concern. I thank you for your, your prayers. Please, 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 just breathe deep and relax, okay? Life is good. We serve a good God. We're in good hands. As long as I listen, we're okay. Um... But I'll still take your prayers. We can still pray for that. We'll still pray for wisdom for the docs and those kinds of things. Um, but that's literally it. So please talk to me. Do things with me. You can throw things at me. It's all good. All right? You don't have to, you don't have to protect me. You don't have to worry. Deal? All right. Um, when there's new news, there'll be new news. Nothing else is scheduled, nothing's on the horizon, so uh, we'll, let that, we'll let that be as it is. Um, and that's just, just speaking of, Noreen continues to fight with her cough, um, her cough and her breathing, hers is being a little more persistent, uh, so keep praying for her as well as you would, uh, so that breaks up. Um, I think that's it. I want to know one prayer that you prayed this week that God answered. 
One prayer this week that God answered. Protection over your mind, body, and spirit. What else? Me. A successful sale with the short sale. You got some rest. The rest of y'all either didn't pray or didn't get any answers, right? Relaxation. Say that again. You found some dairy feeder calves that were washed. You lost calves? Ah, okay. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm figured, you know, I don't know a lot about farms. I know they're pretty good size. Tough, tough to misplace. Okay. What else? Safe travels. Safe travels. Things happen every day, right? We live our life, we go through life, and we have things that happen that if we're really active with our prayer life, we can see it's the hands of God at work. My encouragement to you today, not only as we pray, but as we talk through prayer here over the next few minutes, that you open your eyes to those kinds of things. I want you to look for God at work. I want you to pray with anticipation about God being at work. Okay? Expectant prayer is key. Uh, Faith-driven prayer is key. There's an old joke that, 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 that talks a little bit about this. I'll share this, then we'll pray. There had been a, a, a significant drought in the farming region of the country. Farmers were getting worried because the land was going completely dry. Pastor, what do we do about it? Pastor, what do we, well, we need to pray. Let's hold a special prayer vigil. We'll, have, we'll start with a big prayer meeting, then we'll just keep the church in prayer until the rain comes. Great. And so they scheduled the prayer meeting for uh, a couple days out. They come that evening, the pastor shows up, and all the farmers start coming in. And they sit down, and the pastor says, thank you for coming, but go home. Pastor, why are we going home? Why are you sending us home? Why are you sending us home, Pastor? You're not expecting any rain. I see no umbrellas. I see no boots. I see no rain jacket. Go home. When we pray, we've got to look for answers. When we pray, we need to expect answers. And so as we pray today, pray with that in mind. Pray that you're able to see. Pray that you're able to hear. Pray that you're able to experience God at work through your prayers, okay? Let's pray. God, it is sweet to be in your presence and to pray. It 
sweet to taste your goodness, your mercy, your blessing. Father, it's good to know that when we cry out, you're hearing, you're listening, you're moving to answer. There's no greater expression of your love than that. We look around and we see you in all of creation. We see the work of your hands. We just marvel at how great you are. Everything moves in order. Everything moves according to your design. It never stops and never fails. What a wonderful God you are. Father, we come to you this morning because of that greatness. We come to you this morning simply because of who you are and what you do for us. We come to you this morning, God, just simply because there's no one else that we can turn to. There's no one else that knows us and loves us like you do. There's no one else who understands all of man for all of time. And with all of that, with all of that greatness, with all of that authority, you still choose to listen to each and every one of us. You listen to our prayers for the needs that we have in our lives. You listen to individual prayers for help. You listen to individual prayers to have needs met. You listen to individual prayers that are seeking comfort, that are seeking wisdom, that are seeking joy. In all of your greatness, each and every one of us matters. God, thank you for listening to us. Thank you for inviting us into your presence. We know there's absolutely no reason you should, and it's only because of your grace and your love that you do. Because at any given time, at any given day, we're going to fail to sin. At some point, we're going to do something, say something, think something that in and of itself should keep us from your presence. But yet, when we seek forgiveness, you give it, and you welcome us in. Thank you for that perfect, gracious, faithful love. Father, we thank you for answers to prayer this week. 
We thank you for listening and moving in our lives in such a way that we could see you. We thank you for the answers to prayer that we've been lifting up together. It reminds us of just how important prayer is. It reminds us that we should continue to pray regularly. Father, we thank you for healing that's taking place. We thank you for recovery that's taking place. Father, we thank you for new opportunities. We thank you for peace as answers are waited for. Father, there are so many things that take place. And you're in charge of each and every one. We offer ourselves to you today, God. We offer ourselves as the body of Christ. We offer ourselves as followers of Jesus, imitators of him. Father, for the tithes and the offerings given, thank you for that privilege and opportunity to share. Thank you for inviting us into your kingdom work. challenging us and expecting us to play a role. Bless what was given today, Father. Give us wisdom as we disperse it and use it as we continue to seek and serve your will. Continue, God, to lead us Continue to provide for us. Continue to challenge us. To encourage us. And then, Father, just love us. As we turn to your word, open our hearts, our minds, our ears to what it is that you have for us today. Stir in us what we need in order to better serve you. In the name of Christ, we get to pray these things this morning. Amen. Good morning. I will be reading four different translations of 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Please stand for the reading of God's word. So from the New International Version, it says pray continually. From the New Living Translation, never stop praying. From the English Standard Version, Pray without ceasing. In the New English translation, constantly pray. A very short verse, but a very significant verse. For a lot of people... There really is nothing more scary to them than somebody asking them to pray in the in the middle of a public setting. Imagine you're at a restaurant with your Sunday school class or your small group. You guys are having dinner. You're celebrating something. And say, hey, would you pray? How many of y'all would just instantly break into sweats? 
It's unnerving for a lot. I see a lot of heads going this way, yeah. It's unnerving for a lot of people um, for, for whatever reason. Um, it's, it's one of those high-stress things that when you think about what our life in Christ is like, it, it's, it's, a, it's a different kind of reaction to what should be a perfectly natural thing for us to do. Um, I, think, I think the biggest reason is this. We worry too much about the prayer. We've taken so much time to learn patterns of prayer, formulas for prayer, postures for prayer, what to say in prayer, those types of things that we forget really uh, all the more that prayer is. When we think about praying in its simplest form, this is it. It's both the practice and the discipline of communicating with God through both speaking and listening. It's a conversation with God. It's talking with God. When you talk with somebody, there's no right or wrong way. We are ourselves when we communicate with others. Yeah, there's times that some words and phrases and expressions and tones are appropriate or inappropriate. But by and large, it's just us talking back and forth. It's a give and take. It's speaking. It's listening. It's a dialogue. It's that opportunity that we have to get to know what's on each other's heart and what's on each other's minds. It's an opportunity, very simply, just to get to know each other more. And when we think about prayer, we think about God. When we think about God, I want you to remember this. We learn a lot and we get to know God through Scripture. Scripture is where we get to know all about God. Who he is, where he is, what he does, how he moves, all those kinds of things. But we get to know God through prayer. We get to know his voice. We get to know his love for us. We get to know his desires for us. We get to know his desire for our life. And so we know about God from Scripture. We know God through prayer. And that's why prayer is such an important part of being a disciple and a follower of Jesus. The prayer, the prayer, the Scripture that Katie read today, um, it's, at the, it's at the end of 1 Thessalonians. Paul is just giving a list of instructions to the church. And what he's telling them to do with pray continually is this. It's all about an attitude. It's all about a mindset. It's all about your approach and your understanding of God. He doesn't give a formula. He doesn't give a pattern. He just says, you know what? Pray. And we read those two words. Pray continually. Or three words, pray without ceasing. And we think to ourselves, wow, I can't do that. Wow, my faith must be terrible. I can't do that. My relationship with God mustn't be what it is. It mustn't be what it's supposed to be. I can't do that. I'll never get anything done. And we start thinking about praying without ceasing as an obstacle rather than an opportunity. And all Paul is telling us to do is just orient your attitude, orient your lifestyle to this kind of life. Today's going to be just a little bit different. We're not going to get into a whole lot of nuts and bolts about prayer. You guys know how to pray. I will guarantee you, every one of you in this room knows how to pray. Every one of you has the ability to address God and talk to him. Is there anybody who cannot do that? Is there anybody who cannot speak words to God? So you don't need another lesson on prayer. 
Maybe what we do need, though, is practice. We haven't talked a whole lot about NCD kinds of stuff, uh, the surveys and such that we took. Um, you know what we learned about our prayer life through that survey? Prayer doesn't excite you all. On the whole, prayer is not something that we as a body look forward to. Does that surprise you? What we learned is that we don't anticipate answers when we pray. We go through motions. When we pray as a collective body, by and large, it's now I lay me down to sleep kinds of things. You know how you change those? By putting prayer into practice and taking specific steps to saying this is what we want to do with our prayer life. We want to bring life to it. How many of you would just love to see answers to prayer day in and day out? How many of you all would like that? Okay, most of you. Okay. And so pray, expect the answers. That's, that's the cheap version of the message today. Pray, expect the answers. What we're going to do today, I'm going to give you just the mindset that Paul's talking about with the Thessalonians. And then we're going to give you something to do with it. I want you to think back to Moses in the burning bush. We're going way back to Exodus. And Moses is in the wilderness. He and God are having a conversation. Moses is trying to get out of the job that, that God is giving to him. Moses, I want you to go talk to Pharaoh, let my people go, and all that kind of stuff. And Moses is trying to get out of the assignment. He finally relents. He finally lets God know that he'll do it. He says, okay, I will. Just... One more thing, God, who am I going to tell them sent me? And God says, tell them that I am sent you. And in that name, in that characteristic that God gives to himself, in that description that God says, we get the first key to what it means to pray without ceasing, to pray continually. We need to live in the presentness of God. God has been forever past, always present, forever future, all at the same time, because God lives outside of our understanding of time. He's not bound by time and space. God is everywhere all the time. And so only God can say, I am. When we pray, that's the mindset that we need to have. We need to be in the moment. We tend to live our life in one of two ways. And this is pretty normal for people. We either live with our minds reflecting backwards, or we live with our minds anticipating what's coming ahead. And very rarely do we live in the moment. Yet in the moment is where God lives. I'll guarantee you right now around the room, any number of y'all have thought about the weekend, you've thought about things that have been going on, you're thinking about what's coming up today, you're thinking about activities for the day, you're thinking about your schedule for the week already, you're wondering what's going on with so-and-so and all those kinds of things, and you're forgetting about the fact that you're here to worship God today. And you've lost the moment that he gave to you. Remember what Jesus said about worrying in the Sermon on the Mount? It doesn't bring you anything. You can't add or take away from what's going to come by worrying about it. He goes on to talk about the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. And they don't worry a bit, and God provides for them. And here you are, the pinnacle of his creation, and all we do is worry. Your first key to praying in the moment 
to pray without ceasing is to be in the moment. Be more aware of where you are right here, right now. There's been countless times in my years of ministry that I get a call and I have to go somewhere on the spur of a moment. And I have no idea what it is I'm going to be walking into. And those prayers are simply this. God, you're already there. Give me the words. God, you're already there. Show me what to do. And those are my prayers. Nothing fancy, nothing big, nothing grand and glorious. No, it's just, God, you're sending me into something that I'm completely ignorant of. And so give me what I need. Been any number of times out for a drive, fire trucks go past, police car goes past, ambulance go past. Just pray for what's going on. God, I have no idea where that rig is going. Bless the family. I have no idea what that officer is responding to. Keep him safe. Those are prayer without ceasing kinds of things. You walk into the room and you notice somebody's struggling just a little more than usual. Their body might be a little stiff. And you just whisper out a prayer to God. God, I notice they're, they're a little stiff today. Loosen whatever's ailing them. Be aware of where you're at. Be aware of what's going on in that moment. The second thing that we get is living a lifestyle in the presence of God. We know intellectually that God's everywhere. We know that he's all around us all the time. And yet we don't embrace that. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glories of God. All of this beauty, the works of his hands, it's all there. And so when we go out in life, we're walking in his presence. We can't escape it because God designed a world that reflects him. And we need to notice that. And when we're out walking in that world, when we're, we're seeing the blue sky, sniffing the fresh air, looking at the flowers, the trees, all those kinds of things, we're walking as the pinnacle of his creation. Mankind was the top of the creative order and is the top of the creative order. And so now we're not only seeing the, the trees, the birds, all this stuff around us, but now we need to see each other. Ladies and gentlemen, your life is not an accident. There is nothing in your life that happens that has surprised God in any way, shape, or form. Not once did you make a decision, not once have you encountered something that caused God to be sitting in heaven and say, well, I didn't see that one coming. Because you were purposed. You were created for this time and this place in history. And so every encounter that you have is a God-designed moment. And we need to embrace those. We need to realize that God's in those things. And so we live not only in the presentness, embracing the moments, but we live in the presence, recognizing that he's there. And then we live with this attitude of, of preparedness. We're ready. We're, we're always looking. We're sensitive to it now. And so we are ready to always be offering that prayer of the moment. And that prayer could be dozens of different things. But if you're living with awareness, you're going to notice things. You're going to start to notice people. You're going to, you're going to start to notice circumstances and context and all that kind of stuff. 
and you're going to be ready. And if you're living with that lifestyle, you're going to recognize a few things aren't possible. You're not always going to be able to assume your prayer posture. You're not always going to be ready to sit and meditate and still and all those kinds of things before you pray. Because what's happening right here and now is what God's calling you to pray for. And be prepared. Don't worry about how it comes out of your mouth. Because if you're praying your heart, if you're noticing things around you, if you're noticing people around you, if you're noticing circumstances around you, whatever comes out is what needs to come out. And if it does come out a little sideways, you know what the beauty of it is? Our words, by the time they get to God, have been clarified through the Spirit. God, I know they got really tongue-tied when they tried to say that. This is what's on their heart. And it's there. There's going to be those times that you're able to prepare and you're able to have a complete mindset, heart set, ah, I'm ready to pray. And there's going to be those times that you're going to see something happen, boom, and you say, God, they need you right now. You don't have to know everything. All you know is you just saw something where somebody needs the hand of God. And if you pray, God, that woman needs you right now. He hears. And that's all you have to do. The Spirit puts us into places, puts us into circumstances, and He speaks to us. This is the part of prayer we often struggle. We just don't listen as well as we need to listen. In a lot of our, our more conservative circles, in a lot of the brethren circles, we're, well, we love the Holy Spirit. We appreciate his work. We appreciate the way he moves, but we're scared of him sometimes if we're honest. What in the world is the Spirit going to ask of me? What's the Spirit going to do? Holy Spirit is never going to ask you to do anything that you're not capable of doing. God's love for you is such that he's not going to ask you something that's impossible for you to do. And so listen and respond. Towards the end of Ephesians, Paul is writing about the armor of God. He's talking about this, this battle that we face in the world. He's talking about what's going on, how this is a spiritual thing. This is not a flesh and blood thing. And he tells us to put on the full armor of God. And he goes through that passage. And at the end of the passage, we get this verse, uh, verse 18. Read it with me, if you would. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of these things. Pray in the Spirit means just pray. Spirit led. Paul's not telling you to use a prayer language. He's not talking to you about praying in tongues. He's not talking about anything other than let the Spirit be your guide. Listen. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions, which means listen, speak. Listen, speak. And you see senses in there of this praying continually, praying without ceasing. Be alert and always keep on praying. A couple of things we're going to do with this today. First, on the back table are little cards. They're about yay big. 
Some of them are paper, some of them are laminated. Um, we didn't have the resources to get them all laminated this week, but we'll be glad to do that for you. So if you get one, it's paper. We'll have, we'll have bunches of them available with laminate on them uh, for you. It's a prayer of the Armor of God package. It's a prayer designed for you to pray each and every morning. Dear God, as I get up today, I know there is going to be battle. I know there is going to be difficulty. I know there's going to be. And as you put on the armor of God, there are specific prayer desires for you to pray. I would love for each of you to have one of those cards. And I would love for each of you to start praying that prayer daily as you start your day. The spiritual battle is real. Good and evil exist. Satan and demons are real. They're already defeated. They don't know it yet. And so they continue to fight. So job number one is get one of those Take it with you and start making that a daily prayer. Second thing we're going to do is this, and this is how we're going to finish out the day. Um, we're going to sing our, our closing song. We're going to do a prayer walk for this reason. Because the forces of evil are real, We're experiencing them. Think over the last X span of time here in this body. Think about the number of odd things that happen at the wrong times. Think about the unusual types of illnesses and difficulties that, that many face. Think about the times that once a ball gets rolling, something gets in the front of it and causes that ball to stop. Think about how difficult it is to gain momentum sometimes when we're trying to push forward on something that we know in our hearts is going to make a difference. The battle's real. A prayer walk is nothing more than what the words say. You take a walk and you pray while you do it. Also on that back table, there's, there's some full-size sheets of paper. Now, given your, your capabilities, we've got options for you, okay? If you can't get up and move around and walk, just stay here in the room, and there's a list of stuff here for you to pray about. Some of you, you're going to be able to walk some of the building, all of the building, staying inside. That's great. There's some instructions for you if you're walking inside. Some of you are, are able to enough and, and you're able to, you can go out and you can walk the perimeter of, of the, the campus and there's instructions for you as you do those prayers. Make your choice. Choose whichever you want. The key simply is this. As you look at things, as you go by places, stop and pray specifically for what takes place. So, for instance, if you're walking past the sanctuary, your prayer is something along the lines of, God, make our worship vibrant. Protect our hearts as we lift them to you. Speak, speak about those things that are related simply to worship and pray for that which happens in this room. You go by my office, pray for wisdom for me. I love that prayer. Pray for my protection as well. Um, up until two or three weeks ago, I was a perfectly healthy young man. And now look at me. But pray. I would appreciate that prayer. Pray for wisdom, pray for protection, pray for whatever it is that God lays on your heart that you want to pray for me. You know, and as, as you walk, you know, as you go downstairs, pray for this preschool, the ministry. You walk into the youth room, 
pray for the youth and for the things that they face. But as you walk around the campus, walk around the building, pray for specific things every place you go. If you choose to walk outside and you walk, I would encourage you to really walk the boundaries and remind Satan that inside of these boundaries is not his place to be. That inside of these boundaries, he's already defeated. We believe in the power and the blood of Christ. We believe in the resurrection, resurrected Christ and all that he stands for. And just let Satan know he's no longer welcome. And pray those types of prayers as you move around. You with me so far? Is there anybody who's completely confused? Okay. Like I say, choose whichever one you want. Whichever one feels like you, that's what I want you to do. But I want you to pray. I believe. Who did I say? I said this to somebody just a couple weeks ago. Oh, Pastor Dwayne, that's who it was. Hey, I'm, I don't know that really matters. I really truly believe this congregation is poised for something very special. And I've thought that since back when I was interviewing. I really think God has something in store for us. And I think it scares the gates of hell. And I think we need to be a little more intentional about standing against them. So that's why today, I'm not going to tell you the words to pray you already heard. Present, presence, preparedness, listen to the Spirit and pray. 10.13, Sunday school is 10.30, give or take. Don't rush your walk. Take your time. When you're done, go to Sunday school. If you don't go to Sunday school, number one, shame on you, you should be. But number two, keep praying then. And we'll, we'll take all the prayer that we can get. Okay? You understand what I'm asking of you? All right. We're gonna, I'm going to pray. We're going to stand. We're going to sing just one verse of Great is Thy Faithfulness because we do want to declare that part of God. And then the blessing is just simply going in His grace and pray. Okay? Let's pray together. God, thank you for uh, just that opportunity that we have to talk with you continually. Thank you that um, when we speak, you're listening. Thank you for answering in each and every moment. God, as we go out and we begin these prayers, as we begin this walk, go with us. In each of our hearts, God, stir in us where we should go, what we should say. Listen to the prayers. Hear our prayers. Move in our midst as we do these things. We thank you for that in the name of Christ. Amen. Stand up with me. Let's sing verse 1. Great is thy faith.
A faithful God will lead you and guide you. Go in his faithfulness, his grace, and go pray 